Hello everyone. So in this tutorial, we will learn how to create curved motion blur in Houdini for particles and geometry. And we will do this using uh, widths. Okay. So we'll also learn widths in this process. So this is like a very common problem like many face, but uh, there is a, I'm not finding a very simple solution. So like uh, uh, in this, we'll use just a single node, uh, sing, uh, like single code uh, in an attribute triangle to calculate the curved motion blur. Okay. So let's see how we are doing it. So I'll put a sphere. So I'm inside this geometry node and I'll put a sphere. Let's delete the, this one. So I'll just emit some particles randomly from this uh, sphere. I'll put a pop network. And here I'll just put a pop force. Okay. And I'll just increase the amplitude like uh, crazy 20. So we have kind of high velocity and the particles are like swirling so that we can see if the uh, motion blasts are working. And we will, that's it actually, we'll put a null. out let's play so we have some very fast moving uh, particles we should actually be having some motion blur now so in Houdini to turn on motion blur you need to come here and you should turn on uh, turn on velocity blur then in out you can put a mantra node and in mantra node you can turn on motion blur okay so if you want, you can increase this uh, geo samples. So this should calculate the uh, motion blur. Before uh, rendering it out, we'll create a simple shader. We'll call it emit. We'll create a, an emission uh, shader. I'll make it orange color and I'll give some emission to it. Now we'll assign it to the particles. Okay. So we we'll put a camera and we will render it. Let's see what we are getting. We should have some motion blur. So the particle size is like too big. We will put on an attribute render and may and reduce the P scale. Effort P scale some caps. We'll manually give some small value. Right. So we have motion blur. But if you see, these motion blur are like linear, they are straight and they don't have any uh, curveness. But since uh, we are giving some uh, swirl size, uh, swirliness in the pop, uh, pop, we should actually have some curved motion blur. But all we have is like this streaks so this is actually not realistic so how do we get this curved motion blur so we will use a method called range, uh, range kata method so it helps us to like make the moving object like for for example in our case the uh, like the points uh, smooth and uh, realistic so let's say like you are uh, imagine like you are throwing a ball in the air and uh, it do doesn't just like st uh, shoot straight up and down it kind of curves right so the range uh, kata method helps us to figure out the curve so uh, like uh, consider a movie in which the like uh, there is a ball like kind of like uh, falling uh, but it is falling in a curved motion and now if we connect these uh, these frames, uh, the balls in these frames, we will get only straight lines. But using the Range Kata method, we can find the actual curved projectile path of the ball. Even if we don't have the information, like in between information. But we need some values, like for example in our case, we need the time value, we need the acceleration value, and we need the velocity value. So using this, we can kind of like calculate the 
curved projectile for every po every point okay so let's see how i will explain it to you like we'll see how to uh, now create a curved motion board for just for experiment uh, uh, for uh, uh, example purpose i will just add a single point so we can see clearly okay so i have added a single point it is in the origin now i will animate it i will make it go a little faster uh like 50 maybe and in uh, z i will queue cos okay so this is now going to go in uh, in a circular shape let's see where it is so here is the point and it is rotating okay so this obviously like it is rotating very fast also so it should have some curved motion board. so let's create a curved motion board. but before that we will just copy this p scale value here so that we can render it and see okay we'll put a trail and calculate velocity Now uh, we'll render it. I think it has already rendered. Uh, so you are not able to see any curved uh, motion blur here. Let's uh, jump into our process. So in our process, we need a trial node to calculate velocity, and we'll compute velocity. And this is like kind of optional. If you want to like compute velocity within your frame range only. i prefer it then you should compute acceleration because remember like we need three values one uh, one is time one is uh, velocity and one is acceleration and i will so if you want you can turn this on in my case it is of no use but this is like good to have like you can turn on match by attribute so we have calculated the velocity and acceleration also so let's put the um, time shift now so we need the time shift node to make the frames into integer okay so this integer frames is like turned on so we are going to run this ranga kutta method in only on the these frames and in between position we'll figure out like we'll calculate okay we have some step information also so that is like an advantage so this ranga kutta method works only if we have like at least uh, two sub steps so when you are caching you should cache with two sub steps i'll show you how to do that also so let's put an attribute anchor and we need like uh, three variables okay first is time but in our case we are not going to use the real time like uh, we are going to calculate the fractional time so it is kind of like a time step so this time is like calculated from previous frame to the current frame see we'll see how to do this float time equals we are creating a variable called time and uh, f at frame minus in frame and we'll divide it by dollar fps so what we are doing is we are subtracting the integer value of the uh, the frame like i mean the uh, rounded value with the current float value whatever it may for example let's say like we are in uh, 71 frame uh, 71.4 frame okay so like uh, this will be like 71.4 subtract minus 70 and we are dividing that uh, fractional time value between these two divided by fps so we are getting the frame step i mean time step okay so this is what we are going to use in the ranga ranga kata method to determine the displaced new position i mean the curved position that is like uh, that we are going to calculate so we have the time now we need the velocity so we already have velocity we have we we assign it into a variable we will be see and we will put it vector a is equal to the acceleration at we at cell 
so now we have all three uh, variables that we need so like how to use this ranga kata method luckily we have we already have like formulas uh, equations to uh, cal calculate the projectile path okay so this is the equation and i have kind of uh, changed it to make it work with hodini and here this is this is the formula that we will be using so now we will just replace the uh, like uh, time and velocity and acceleration in our formula okay so we need four uh, variables for our uh, uh, this this equation let we will consider it as v1 v2 v3 and v4 vector v1 equals v2 time so now we will just follow the uh, equation so in, the, in this uh, equation we are going to use like four assumed value or like uh, determined value to and then we will kind of take an average to figure out the uh, projectile path okay so that will be the concept behind this equation so then vector v2 b plus a into time into 0.5 into time into 2 so this will be the second variable that we are generating and uh, we, for the same uh, v3 also it will be the same uh, variable uh, and then for v4 so these four values we are uh, generating in between this path like uh, and we are like calculating the displacement okay so from the average we will only get the displacement then we will add it to our position so let's see how to do that also and we'll first finish all our uh, variables that we need okay so vector displace equals so we are creating the displacement uh, uh, for each and every frame so like this will be the average okay v1 plus v2 V three plus V four, and we will divide it by six. So now we have the displacement value, like for every uh, like point, how we have to displace, like how much we have to displace. We we'll add it to the position. V F P plus equals. Right. I mean, sorry, this. so that's it like uh, we have everything that we need to create a uh, curved motion plan so we will also visualize this like how it is working first we will put a trial node okay then i will increase the trial length like maybe 20 or even more like 120 something like that first i will disable this uh, uh this displacement uh, what we are uh, creating here so we will slowly increase the trial length so if you see there is like not much information in the middle like right now so like uh, now if we turn on this attribute rangle now i think we miss something we should be having central difference here okay so remember this central dif difference is like very important and then if we come here you can see we have the intermediate points also like there is like no intermediate points and we have kind of calculated the displacement uh, like from each and every point and on how much and like we have like added it to the position and we got the curved position like curved path so let's see how this is like working uh, we'll go to our camera also in order for this uh, method to work you have to remove this velocity blur to no velocity blur and go to out and increase the geo time samples okay like uh, i prefer more than like 8 or equal to 8 and let's see let's see the render
So you can see we have curved motion blur. I can show you from like a little bit nearby. Yeah, you can see we have clear curved motion blur. So all we have to do is add these two nodes. One is a time shift and another is this attribute wrangled node. Then come here and disable the velocity blur. And here increase the geo time samples. I think this might also help, but I'm not sure. Like let's try increasing it to five. It's form times. So I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, basically no difference. So let's revert it to default. So this one should be like a really high value, like more than seven, eight. Like whatever you find it efficient and uh, look good, looking good. So we can replicate the same in the pop sim also. Copy these three nodes. And we need multiple sub steps. So we'll use like four sub steps and we'll put a time. Uh, sorry, file cache node. Also, we'll do one thing. We'll put a transform node and uh, spin it a uh, little more so that we can clearly see the uh, curved motion bar. Like, let's cache it out. When you are caching the remove bar, you should have like four sub steps. Like, how much of a sub steps you want? It should be at least two. And let's save to disk. So let's go to some frame. We start a render. We should have curved motion blur and the particles also. Yeah, we have curved motion blur. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, if you have learned something, please subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if you want to download all the hip files, like for all the videos that I'm doing. You can subscribe to my uh, Patreon. Uh, like this will like really encourage me to create more creative or and useful uh, videos like this. Uh, that's it actually. Like I'll see you in the next video. Bye.